Well, the idea of the kind of emblematic, ephemeral object, the kind of everyday thing that we come in contact with and for the most part kind of take for granted, those are the things that you see in museums in Europe. We go to see a Viking museum in Denmark and I'm looking into a display case that were things that were everyday, belt buckles, hairpins, combs, all these things that were kind of mundane, everyday objects. But in time and, in, and with contextualization, these things become what kind of anthropologists call a contextualization for culture or society. I feel like as an artist, I like to play a kind of speculative role in relationship to what these types of things could be as kind of museum objects into the future. As a child, I wanted to be two things when I grew up, you know. I wanted to be Indiana Jones, or I wanted to be a psychic detective. To the, my betterment and my detriment as an artist, I could play both of those things. I could play the speculator that finds these objects and proposes to an audience that these are things that we should be looking at um, in relationship to culture, in relationship to a kind of social order of the present that will be important in the future. Um, and in doing that, I feel like I empower myself to have that collecting ability, but also empower the audience because when they get home and they see like, like for example, one of the objects in the collection is my uncle's uh, paint stick stirrer that he's been using as a Black Widow killer on his porch, right? And he wrote with a big Sharpie marker on it, Black Widow killer. And he's even notched out with like increments of five all the Black Widows that he's killed on his porch. And this thing is just something that sits on his porch. But to me, I really find that it strikes an interest that he was able to kind of create something new out of this device, give it a new meaning, give it a new purpose. And I think that when, as people, hopefully when they see the objects and hear the stories that are involved in this exhibition, that they could go back into their own lives, into their own homes, into their own relatives' homes, and see these quirky moments where their family members are engaged in creating culture that might not be on a large kind of uh, grand context, but that are creating culture on a micro level within the family. And that's how style is kind of created and passed on. My family has influenced my style as an artist in several ways. Some that are totally conscious and some that are very subconscious and that I'm not aware of, but are maybe more innate in some kind of genetic makeup. How I wake up every day in the middle of the night, like at three or four in the morning and I'm ready to start the day. And I don't know if that's because I come from like a real working class family where like waking up that early was kind of important for like work and survival and somehow and like my genetic memory, like waking up that early is relevant. In terms of style, um, I think a kind of looseness and kind of attitude and that improvisation and kind of, uh, it is what it is and to make things kind of work, um, with whatever you have um, has really influenced how my style developed as an artist. Well, I think geography has really influenced my style and had a deep impact on a kind of approach for me being an artist. One is that since I grew up here in the harbor area of Los Angeles, being here on the ocean is, is, is a very particular sensibility, a more of a laid back sensibility than being in the urban center of the city, but also that we're here in a kind of industrial area of Los Angeles, being that I'm here in the port, that idea of kind of labor and kind of organized labor and being really a kind of um, uh, engaged in a kind of daily labor activity, which happens here on the port, you know, because here in, in Wilmington and the surrounding areas, it's, it's mostly organized labor with the longshoremen that kind of are the big job force that is here. So having that sensibility of like being able to be around and see how like a kind of socialist model in relationship to capitalism in the United States is a viable option, 
I think that that is a very particular uh, idealism to be growing up in. Um, also, the other interesting fact about growing up in the port or growing up here specifically in Wilmington is that it's the only city on the whole entire west coast of the United States that is on the ocean but has no beach access. My connection with Santa Barbara is, is really interesting. First of all, my father was born in Santa Barbara um, and I have great uncles that are no longer living and their families that are, are live, still living in Santa Barbara. But uh, my own memories or my first memories of visiting Santa Barbara as a child was to go visit my great grandmother. Her name was Mika, her name was Michaela, but we called her Mika. And she lived to be 107 years old. And I remember as a small child taking the drive up the coast and passing Santa's Village and um, my dad smoking a joint, dry, listening to Sade and his like red Datsun 280ZX. The first thing I really collected from my uncles and my father and my family were stories. And I guess that was a kind of, that has been happening over a lifetime, right? Like every Christmas or holiday or birthday party or whatever, I've been listening to their stories, almost to the point now where I feel like I can repeat their stories without even having them there, right? I'd go visit my uncle, uh, my, my eldest uncle, his name is Claudio, my father's older brother. I went to visit him, sit with him for a few hours, talk to him. Um, and then they had all kind of been to my studio and, and they all kind of understand that I like to collect things. I think, it's a, I think it's kind of a family thing too because one day I remember we were sitting in the living room at my grandmother's house with a few of my uncles and my father and all of us started pulling out of our pockets either pocket knives or watches or a wallet or a bell buckle or something that we thought was cool and we were kind of in a sharing time. And, um, so I think that, that we kind of have that as a way to also share stories, a way to share information through objects. And then when we started the project uh, with CAF and I started explaining to them like, oh, they're gonna be things that are going into a museum, then they, they really warmed up to the idea of starting to give me things, right? Like, oh, it's gonna be a museum, a museum. And they would be like, oh, but you gotta take care of it. You gotta bring it back to me. And I'm like, no, no, it's gonna be in a case. And they're like, oh, it's gonna be in a case? Okay, like things started, they started letting go of things. And it's been a while now that we've been working on this project. So now they're starting to get a little bit anxious because they're like, when is, your sh when is the show? When am I gonna see my stuff in the cases? Some things have come to me over the years. Some things have just come to me recently. Some things I didn't, I never knew existed, or I had a vague um, memory of the story, but not the kind of object that existed with the story. Like for example, here we have a pile of really complicated jigsaw puzzles, and they come from my uncle George. And my uncle George, when he was 18 years old, he got into a car accident. He broke his neck. He had to be in a year-long rehabilitation. He had to wear a halo and learn how to walk, talk, everything again. They said he was going to be paralyzed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Part of his rehabilitation at the beginning then was to make these jigsaw puzzles to help him with memory, to help him with his coordination and placing these things. Um, and then just two years ago, now he's maybe in his mid-40s. He continued going to school after that accident. Once he recuperated, he walks again, he drives again, does all this stuff. And he was a real inspiration for me because a few years ago we. He just graduated uh, from Cal State Long Beach with a degree in engineering. Biggest memories of my Uncle Bill when I was a kid was that he had a VW bus and that our family was going to go on a family trip to Yosemite um, in this VW bus. And we drove up there, we had a really great time, you know, looking at things, nature, and that we were driving and caravanning home on the freeway. And I remember we were in the VW bus and there were like two other cars in front of us with different family members. And the VW bus, which are infamous for breaking down, <laughs> broke down at the back, at the, but it was unfortunate for us that we were the last car in the caravan. So all the other family members kept going, <laughs> kept going. And it was in the 80s, so it was before cell phones and all this. And they just kept on going. I remember it was like a really like, all of us was like, it was kind of like the tearjerker moment, you know, like the, the cars disappear on the horizon line on the highway. Like 
Those type of memories are really the, the things that kind of drive the Theo collections. So to be able to tell like our, my specific story in relationship to my uncles, um, or how these objects are kind of starting points for those types of stories. Uh, oh, hold on a second. Catch my breath. It's hot. Yeah. Want to catch my breath right now? Yeah. It's like being a rapper. <laughs> I know. <laughs> So like all these things um, are, are, are a reflection of like what their life experience has been through and what I could learn from them. And there's a saying that has always stuck with me, which is a wise man learns from his mistakes, but a wiser man learns from the mistakes of others. And I feel that that is a legacy that all families could have, you know. So we do create family in all types of ways and the way that uh, we create, you could say it's tribes or even gangs, like for example, it's because there's a need for us to be in communication and to be learning from uh, others, right? And um, so that's why it's important for me to kind of look at these things and they become kind of landmarks or, or kind of trail markers for different paths.